listen to the vibes. The views and opinions of our guests may not necessarily reflect those of the host or the Vibes Broadcast Network. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. And once again, I have my buddy J.V. Hilliard, otherwise known as Joe. He's on here talking about his new book. So, uh, Joe, tell us what, what's the latest? First of all, thank you very much for having me back. I appreciate that. I know it's been a few months since we, we spoke about book one, mm -hmm. uh, but book two in the Warminster series comes out in late August. Uh, I should have a specific date for you know pre-sales and pre-launch stuff sometime in the first week of August. The book is entitled Voridin's Lair, and it's, a, it's the second installment in, a, in the four book series. Uh, and so if you like book one, uh, The Last Keeper, uh, it's a it's a follow on to that. So, you know, the the crew of good guys still tracking down the bad guy, Great Taurus the Mad, and uh, they get closer to sort of an Empire Strikes Back moment uh, in, in book two. So if you're kind of familiar with how Empire Strikes Back went, uh, you'll probably be familiar how uh, Vorden's Lair will, will, will go. It's sort of the, the continuation pushing toward uh, the final two novels, uh, one will come out, uh, the third will come out, I should say, in uh, uh, around Christmas time, and the, the final installment will come out next April. Uh, so we're we're on track, and uh, I'm looking forward to, to, you know, to getting feedback from everybody uh, as, as to what they think on, on book number two. What's it like having to keep up with that? Oh, man, it's tough. You know, I got to be honest with you. You know, writing is fun and I enjoy it. But once it's a business, some of that joy goes out of it. Right. And I don't mean like I, I'm blessed with a great team. Right. I've got a great editor. I've got a great publisher. I've great, you know, friends that are beta readers. I've got people that are, you know, just general creatives around me in the process that are trying to to help in every way. And they take a look at stuff. They offer their opinions. And I you know, I accept their constructive criticism as best I can and make tweaks and changes that my readers want. Um, and, you know, it's just tough when you write the kind of fantasy I do, this epic fantasy, uh, to keep up with the pace of the changing marketplace. Uh, and in today's book marketplace, uh, a lot of readers expect rapid releases of new books. Uh, and yeah. so that's okay to do if you're writing novellas or if you're writing short stories or you're writing serials because you're not writing epic fantasy. I mean, my, I, my books are 130, 140,000 words pushing 500 pages and there's no way to do, you know, that kind of rapid release of product uh, and make it quality. And I think I suffer over the quality stuff all the time. I'm going to make sure that it's read by a number of people. I've got three different editors that are reading it. Uh, and for me, you know, it is a tough and rigorous pace, but I think when I could come up with air, I've come up for air, like right around Christmas, I'm going to have book three coming out and then book four will already be in editing. And at that point, I can kind of come up, take a breath, you know, take a beat and just and and chill for a while and, and see what the reactions are to the final, um, you know, couple of installments of the series. So I'm looking forward to that. And then we can make a determination. Of, is there going to be a second Warminster series beyond that? I've actually gotten a lot of positive feedback uh, from folks Wait. on characters that, you uh, I really didn't expect them to like, you know, a lot of the characters that I, I've got, you know, good feedback on are folks that are tangential to the novel and oftentimes like either comic relief or they're the bad guy and, you know, they, they want to see more of the, of, of, of some of those characters. And so I've been thinking about doing, you know, sort, sort of like origin stories for some of them in the background and, and offering that as sort of an anthology or a set down the road. Um, so, you know, we'll see what happens, but that's, that's the direction it's going. And it, it is a rigorous pace. So with books and movies, they come out, they write them and like the first one will be fantastic. And the second one's kind of like, eh, it, it's okay. And then by the third one, you're like, okay, it looks like they're wore out or something. How do you keep from going into that slump? Well, a couple of ways, really. Uh, first is I've already in my head understand, like I, I, I've already planned out all four books. So there's no, there's no wear and tear on me. I think a lot of authors that are called pantsers, people that in my business, you know, write by the seat of their pants, they'll start writing. Um, the most famous pantser in the world is Stephen King. He'll just think of a great idea and start writing it and then get stuck in the middle of the book, um, you know, and not know how to finish it. And I think that in my case, I write my books backwards to forwards. Like I already have the plot line written out for the end of the series. And I know each step in between. 
And as I move through that, it's just a matter of finishing them, you know, and making sure that they, they have the kind of pop that I want. So it's not for me it, as a more of a planner or like a plotter, as I'm known in the business, like the, you know, the plotter versus pantser routine. Yeah. I, I, you know, for me, you know, I, it's already taken care of because I already know the direction of the story. I'm not, I'm not, you know, wringing my hands over what's going to happen next. And, you know, I, unless someone has a really good idea, it's hard to change these things <laughs> yeah. on the fly, right? You know, it's, it's not like a, you know, you can, you can stop and, and erase something really quickly or go back and do it. And I've seen authors that are independent authors do that in their novels when they get feedback from, um, you know, uh, the readers and stuff like that, they can go in and, and do that. Well, this is a whole different ballgame. And it's hard to go back and do that when you're a published author and you've got, you know, folks that are depending on those royalty checks. And so, you know, you want to fly through those and get them done, but they got to be quality product. And that's why, I, you know, I, I would not write a series if I didn't know where I was going with it already. Yeah. Well, at least you're not a George R. R. Martin, right? <laughs> how, long well, hey, we, how long we've been waiting for that book? <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, I'd love to be, you know, what I mean? I'm jealous of him. You know, he's got a he's got a great repertoire and a, and, a, and a history that I don't have just yet. But, you know, I think that that well, you know, there's an example of that, right, where like the show got ahead of the books. And, you know, oftentimes, you know, there's a why in that road that comes and that's what well, that's what we're seeing, you know, like the, the ending that Martin is suggesting for Game of Thrones isn't the ending that we saw on HBO. Mm -hmm. And that might make people happy or mad or sad in some cases, you know, and, and in my case, I think I've, I've already kind of planned all this stuff out. I know where it's going. And unless something, some big revelation happens, you know, I, I don't think uh, I'll go back and, and change that. But in, in Martin's case, he's got a little latitude. You know, I think every, the minute he puts it out, it's going to be a bestseller like the day of. So if not in pre-sales. So, you know, I'm yeah. not there yet. I'm still working toward that. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But I'm, I uh, I understand what you're saying for sure. Yeah. I mean, I've watched videos on it and people are pissed because they've been waiting for this book for I don't know how long. Yeah, I think people are are worried that because of his age and uh, health that he may not be able to finish, and they want it finished. They don't want this like unfinished business if anything were to happen to him or he got in a position where he just he couldn't write anymore. Uh, and so I think people are out there looking for that, and I think that everybody's hungry for it. I mean, in a few months here, if not next month, I think uh, we might we're going to see you know sort of like the prequel to Game of Thrones and. You know, HBO is launching that in the same way we're seeing stuff on Amazon Prime for Lord of the Rings. They're very popular. They're ingrained in, in people's culture. Some of these books are being read in high schools and colleges now for the kind of the curriculum value of them and, and the the value that they've brought in the times in which they were written. And, you know, I, I think that that's what people are concerned about. I mean, he's somebody I saw him in an interview once with Stephen King. And Stephen King rattled off how many words a day he writes. And M Martin says, I don't write that many words in a month. <laughs> you know, he basically was like, he 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 is like painstakingly looking at every single word in each sentence, making it the right word for that sentence. And, you know, and uh, and and that's why I think that's dragging out. And that's, you're right. I mean, you, you see a lot of people on that have taken a social media or on shows that are getting interviewed and they're just dying for the next and the next and the next. And he's just stringing them along for however long it's going to take. So, yeah, yeah. I, I heard that um, the they're redoing the ending of Game of Thrones because nobody liked the last two seasons and that it's supposed to be somebody's dream. Like, what are they? got jr ewing doing this or what? I, I i honestly yeah i know that's a that's a great call you know what i mean i don't know how they're gonna to, to finish that i've heard those same kind of rumors you know and i'm i'm one of them like i didn't like the the ending because you, you take a hero that you've been cheering for for six seasons and all of a yep. sudden she flips to the villain and, and it's okay to have you know re reveals and stuff that you might not understand but like you're that close to the end and you're there and you're cheering for an ending that you want. And I say, I think sometimes, you know, people trick themselves. I think we saw that with the, the TV series Lost, you know, mm -hmm. there was a point where they lost me as a, uh, as, as a, as a, as a watcher, because it just got out of control. Like, I don't think they knew how it was going to end. And, and so it just got out of control or, or you see that in some instances where people are trying to trick you and they're trying so hard, like in the last version of Star Wars, I mean, sure. In my heart of hearts, I know Ray is a Skywalker, but they didn't want her to be a Skywalker. They wanted to be something else. So they came up with this 
cockamamie Palpatine thing that, you know, they skipped a generation. And I, I honestly don't know the diet. And they were so technical that, you know, fans, like true fans got it, but most fans walked in there, they didn't know what a dyad was, you know, and they, and they did a very poor job of explaining it. And therefore you were hoping that she would be tied to, you know, some Luke and Leia or, uh, or, or, or Leia and Han lost long baby and their twins and all that stuff. And there was none of that. And that could have been very easy. And the fans would have loved it, even if it would have been simple and maybe it was too expected. They tried doing this, you know, this switcheroo and, you know, you get the backlash that you get for that. And that has got to be one of the most popular series of all time. I mean, Star okay. Wars is as beloved as, as Star Trek, as Doctor Who, as, as Game of Thrones, as, as Lord of the Rings are, you know, and, and I think that that's, you know, that's the kind of thing you have to treat that in a way that you think your fans are going to like it with some twists. But, you know, like you said, some of those bigger twists are, you know, they kind of turn off the fan base and then you get a situation that they're in right now with Game of Thrones. Yeah, I'll tell you when it comes to Star Wars, I, I was OK with the the first one, you know, the new uh, the new trilogy. Yeah, basically but, installment seven. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then I uh, just I don't know, man, I didn't care for it. I I don't think they did enough with uh, what's uh, what's that kid's name? The one that was a stormtrooper and he ended up. Defecting. Oh, Finn. Yeah, Finn. Mm -hmm. I wanted them to do more with him. You know, if they were going to go this direction, they should have done more with him. But well, honestly, I, think... I was hoping, really, really hoping they would go with the book and have the twins, you know, uh, Han and, and Leia's kids, you know. Yeah, I, they, for whatever reason, got away from that plot line. And yeah. I don't know why. I think it was very popular, well received uh, from the from the book perspective. And I, I, you know, I think when Disney bought them, you know, Kathleen Kennedy probably had an idea of what she wanted to do uh, with them. And if she wanted it to be uniquely theirs and the books may not have been what she wanted. And so even though I agree with you, I think that the the books and the plot line there were just perfect. Yep. Um, I think everybody has the same problem you do. The folks that I talk to, it's like they were happy that Star Wars returned and seven was a lot like four and it looked yeah. like it was sort of a little bit of a carbon copy of it. Then mm -hmm. you get into eight and I don't know many people. There was there was a couple of scenes in there that I that I enjoyed. And, and then nine just was, I think, you know, outside of it being entertaining was just disappointing. If it uh, was a different. Way. Yeah, if it had been something totally different, another sci fi movie. I might have been OK with it, but I still you don't bring a character in who's not had any training and all of a sudden knows how to do all this stuff with the force. And uh, like, come on. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. Like, I'm the same way. Like if it was a standalone movie that wasn't branded Star Wars, it would have probably been very successful. It was a very entertaining, action packed movie. But because you expect the culmination of the last trilogy to be something epic and there was just a lot of unexplored there were a lot of holes in it right you know and i yeah. you know as much as i wanted to love it you know i look i bought it i went to go see it i'll go see, i'll watch it when it's on tv so you know, i'm complaining about it and maybe i shouldn't be <laughs> but, you know but you know at the end of the day it didn't live up to what i was hoping that it would be and it had the potential to do it they had the budget they've got the, the you know the the disney yeah. teams and all the science all, all these the um excuse me the, the the tech stuff that they could ever want uh to be part of that and and i think that that's yeah. what has disappointed many of the, the hardcore fans of of star wars you know and, yeah. and they're just not happy with the with the way it ended and, and it did get away from a lot of the books yeah i mean i, I hate getting off on that tangent but it, it seems like everything disney's touching now is just going to crap well you know i hear that a lot like i i've got a you know so i like Ma the mandalorian i think what they've done with mandalorian what is has been really unique and good and i think people you know have enjoyed the series and then you know the obi-wan and the boba fett stuff you would i was hoping for more yeah and there were bits and pieces of them that were were okay but like but trying to make boba fett a good guy that's not what boba fett is that's not what i like boba fett you know and i used this earlier you know i have a i have an evil character someone literally called my assassin their favorite character because it was their boba fett my boba fett like this is the Boba Fett of your series, and and you're like, and people use that terminology, and you're, and it's, and now all of a sudden he's supposed to be a good guy, and 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 I don't like the plot lines with the spice. I mean, they're basically, I mean, this is a, you know, a, a, a you know, a young adult stuff, and you're bringing in basically drug trade, 
right, you know, right. And calling it something else and let you know, you're changing names of characters because they're not woke enough for anymore or there's you know, like <laughs> I, I, or, or plot lines because you don't like there there's not enough diversity in the cast and and things like that and it's like I look I get some of that I really do and I can appreciate it but you're focusing on the wrong things put out a good That's product right. and, and people right. will enjoy it and it doesn't matter and your point about Finn I mean Finn's supposed to be one of the main characters like his yeah. character is supposed to be and I just felt like in the last you know, movie and a half he was a side show yeah uh, and, and and there there wasn't I mean even though he was part of some of the adventures it was really Ray which was fine and you know and and, and some of Poe you know and and Poe sort of became that main that sort of like Han Solo character mm -hmm. that was in you know, the gunslinger that shoots from the hip you know but I you know I think they they need the product for what it the potential of what it could have been I think yeah, people yeah. just it just didn't get it didn't live up to, to the hype and I, and I think you see that through the some of these Disney things like I mean Obi-Wan was just the last episode was and I'm not going to give any spoiler alerts here last episode was was great but there's questions you know mm -hmm. about why he didn't didn't do certain things but the others kind of plotted along I thought it was poorly cast and you know it, again it was like I, I I don't know I expect more from Disney I expect more from the Star Wars uh yeah. you know the sort of properties yeah introducing these characters that just aren't part of the story yeah. I don't I don't get it man I don't get it yeah and I, I look I, I have a weird kind of thing like there's like the like having flea and, and, I, and I say this in the most loving way because I'm a Peppers fan. Right. But when you see Flea anywhere, he's Flea. Yeah. He's just Flea. He's like when you see Dennis Miller in a movie, Dennis Miller's Dennis Miller. I mean, yeah. if there is, he could be playing a very serious. No, he's, if that's Dennis Miller. And Flea has that cult of personality or whatever you want to call it, that persona. And the minute you see it, it kind of jars you out of it it's like why is flea in my star wars movie yeah you know, and, and there's certain characters you can do that with and others that you can't you know and i got a little bit of that with like mace windu with samuel l jackson i'm like uh why is samuel l jackson a jedi you know it's <laughs> like you know and, and maybe that's why they they don't cast very famous people for these things because there are they're already not typecast so they don't have they're right. not bringing that gravity with them you know and so you know i I, I I feel you. I mean, I think some of that that um, uh, you know the the, the 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 folks that they brought on for some of these things may have just been misplaced. Yeah, there's a lot of things going on in there. I'm uh, like, you take Boba Fett. How in the world did he get so fat being inside that uh, creature for all that time? Right. Yeah. So you, you you got a guy who hasn't eaten in like 20 years, and you know he crawls out of a creature fat. Uh, gets recovered now that now the sand people the the Tuscan warriors now they're supposedly good somehow we didn't in yeah. the beginning they were just all crazy with killing everybody and just nutty scavengers and now we're to believe that they're good and then the you know the spice runners kill them all and it's like I, I just it's like I don't know the plot to me was and and the the, the I mean the the kids on the Vespa you know, like these these motorized these these hovering vests. It, it was just if, if you're Disney, you have more. I guarantee you, you have more money to spend on you know the the effects to make those Vespas look better. I mean, with the crash scene where the guy's trying to get away, it looks like his car is crashing into like the 1960s Star Trek styrofoam rocks, right? <laughs> like when when you hit them, it just didn't look right. And like he's making like a 90 degree turn on a speeder and crashes and i'm like what the hell was that like you're disney you're star wars you have more money than the government in some cases just spend it to, to clean it up you know and i like i just you know and they even made the 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 monster i can't remember the name of the, the thing in the pit the sarlacc the, pit, the sarlacc now he's good too you know or not the, not the sarlacc the, the thing that eats him in the dungeon that came out and oh, like oh you're talking the t-rex um, yeah 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 i know what you're talking about you know, whatever the hell that creature's called yeah, yeah. They, they bring him out and now all of a sudden he's a pet and he listens and everything's great and it's like uh, yeah. and does I, everything have to be good it's okay for something to be monstrous right it's not, it doesn't have to end this way and and i you know look i, I get that the, the the theme is you know young adult and up but now that I was young adult and fell in love with them and I, I'm part of the up, you know, you can write up here sometimes too. And kids are going to get that, especially advanced young adults. And, and 
I expected uh, Boba Fett to be more of a badass, but you know, yeah. whatever. No, the Boba Fett stuff was, I mean, the plot, the end, I mean, the last two, they made him just extension of the Mandalorian. It's almost like they ran out of ideas. Mm -hmm. And why would Boba Fett want to be Jabba the Hutt? Like, where where in his resume does it say he wants to settle down and become a, a you know, organized crime head on, uh, on the planet? I mean, like, <laughs> where did that come from? It was like, I'm bad, whatever. You know, I was in the Sarlacc for... I'm done. You know what I mean? I'm going to mail it. It's like, I'm going to retire right here. I just, it was just lazy. Rancor. Lazy. Rancor. Yes. Yep. You know it. Rancor. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I, I'm hoping Ahsoka comes out good. I mean, so I think John Favreau is working on Ahsoka. And, but anyway, let's get away from that. I'm going to get back yes, to you. No, no problem. No problem. Because <laughs> I could go on that rant all night. Believe me. Uh, so can I. But uh, I mean, you're seeing your vision come to fruition. What, what's that feeling like? Um, it's exciting, thrilling, and anxious all at the same time, right? Like you, you're, you're. The dream was to write a book, and now the dream has been extended to writing a series. And then, if things go as well as they are right now, it's like the the dream is to do more and more and more. And you know, that's fun, right? I mean, there's a lot that, you, that I wake up every morning, there's no stress in it. You know, the stress is meeting deadlines and stuff that you're going to do anyway. But, you know, ultimately, it's it's um, getting people to pay attention to it in this massive sea of independent authorship. You know, Amazon sees 80,000 new uh, books on a monthly basis or whatever the number is, so crazy number, you know, and even having a publisher like mine, a small publisher that's niche, you know, one that fits into a specific genre you know my, my publisher is called dragon moon press and by their name you can tell what they print right it's a lot of sci-fi fantasy stuff with a with a, a lean towards fantasy and um you know it's hard to stick out in those kind of things so you end up um hoping that people like your book they, they want to talk about it so you, you're you're hammering away at social media you're doing shows like yours you're reaching out to you know to folks at libraries and bookstores and you're showing up at conventions and you know, doing things like that to continue to promote the brand. And I think that what I've learned is people that know that a series is coming out will hold off and buy the whole series, whether it's a box set or, you know, a trilogy or whatever it is, they'll wait because they want to make sure you finish it. You know, and then I know that a lot of indie authors, you know, get that burnout that you described, which is, hey, you know, I did the first one. I can't, I'm done. It didn't work out as well as I thought it was. So I'm going to walk away from it. Um, and in my case, I can't do that. You know, I don't want to do that. I mean, this is, you know, a really, I think, you know, Warminster for me is not just uh, my first foray into fiction, but it's the one I want to have an impact on. I want to read other books in this realm from other points of view, from other angles, from other nations, with other houses and different characters and continue to build it over the years, you know, because I've spent a lot of time world building here and making it work. And I don't want to walk away from this. I need this to be successful. So that's the anxious part. That's the part that's like anxiety that's hanging over your head. The rest of it is, is, great i mean i get to do these shows and talk about star wars i get to do these shows talk about <laughs> rock and roll you know flea i mean whoever thought i was gonna be talking about flea tonight and here i am talking about flea you know but like that that kind of stuff you know every show is different you, you try to you know to, to to you know to do what you can to expose readers to what you hope is an entertaining read mm -hmm. uh and, and that's what i'm trying trying to do so i'm i'm excited i'm i'm, I'm humble uh, is the right word for it with folks that, that write to you and tell you how much they like it or you see a review of someone you don't know you know the the ones that come from family and friends you cherish because you appreciate the time they put into it and they want to see you to be successful too but you know the ones that you get from independent people that you don't know and they're rating you four or five stars you know that makes you feel great do you ever sometimes feel like you're not even living your own life like you're kind of but, looking at it from the outside instead of actually <laughs> in the inside yeah yeah you know sometimes you know it's it's funny because i'll go to conventions or you know i'll, I'll speak at a i spoke at a couple of libraries in the last week uh local to me and um people will ask me about the characters like they don't talk to me about joe the author they talk about the characters and they want to know what's happening and they care about these characters that are all made up they're like in my head you know it's like they're they don't they don't exist right. you know but it's like they, they want to know oh, what is, what's going to happen with this plot line or how's this character or please don't kill this person or make sure that these guys you know get married and they find love or whatever and you're just like i can't tell you anything i don't want to spoil it for anybody but you know like they, they they care more about the 
the fantasy characters than they do about the author. But what I found is, you know, folks will watch these kind of videos. They'll listen to these kind of podcasts. They'll they'll they'll, they'll figure and they and if they like you as an author, they'll follow you. They'll they'll they'll, they'll read your stuff and see where it goes. And I'm a debut author, right? So I know that in the, my heart of hearts, my best work is in front of me. Mm-hmm. And these are just going to get better and better as they go. Um, and, you know, I, I, you know, I think a lot of readers have reached out to me. I try to be responsive to everybody within 24 hours. If they, if they follow me, I'm following them back. If they, they email me on my website, I'm emailing them back. If they, you know, direct message me on my, my uh, social media accounts, I try to get back to them all within 24 hours. Cause I, I care about what they think. And I want to put out a product that they're, that, that they'll love and, and one that they'll continue to buy into. Uh, and I think that's when I'll find success. But for now it's, it's a lot of sleepless nights with fingers crossed, <laughs> oh, ho- hoping that book two sells more than book one and, and, and on and on. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And what's cool is, you know, I know there's people out there, they've got tons of fans. I've got at least one that I know of <laughs> and, you know, she, <laughs> tell me how great I am and all that stuff. And it might sound corny to some folks, but it, it is humbling. It's like, wow, somebody actually likes me enough to, to write me a message and tell me you know, really think I'm great. And, you know, I do get those occasional, man, I love this episode and thanks for bringing this person on. Keep up the good work. Those make me feel on top of the world. But just to have a fan, it's like a whole different thing. <laughs> yeah, I have I have some groupies, you know, like really? I don't mean I don't mean that in a groupy groupy way, but I mean that in like there are folks that will come out to see me within a region or make sure they, they stop by within a convention and, and spend some time talking to me that like my stuff that are waiting for more. And uh and, and I see them all the time, you know, and I appreciate that because I know what that's like too. I mean. You know, some folks have the courage to come up and, and talk to you and, and find out what's going on. Others, especially in my world where, you know, where we have, look, let's face it. I mean, I write for nerds and geeks, right? You know, and they're not always the most extroverted people. So it's hard to figure out what they like. Uh, and so I try to reach out to them and they're walking by my booth. I reach out or they come into the, the, to the library. I make sure I spend time talking to everybody. And, um, you know, I think you can build, you know, a brand loyalty with that. But I also think it's, it's it's you need to know what your readers like you know and you you want to give them more of it um and if it doesn't detract from the story then i don't mind changing things up uh or if it's something that, that i know that people are going to appreciate and i get a lot of you know of of um of contact on it then i'll, then I'll try to do my best on that but it is yes i think i think humbling is the right word <laughs> yeah and you want to give them attention the best that you can is uh to say you go from being just Joe Blow one day and then the next day all of a sudden people are loving what you do <laughs> it's a great feeling man it's a great feeling but um so if they came to you and they said hey Joe uh, do you want this to be a movie or do you think it'd be better as a series what, what would your answer be um it depends on who's at my door first. <laughs> you know, if if a if a movie studio came calling, of course it would make a great movie. But if it was, you know, Netflix or or Amazon Prime or or who, somebody came to me and said we we're looking for content and we think it's a great series, of course this is great for the small screen. It doesn't belong on the silver screen. But in, in truth, you know, I think the answer to your question lies, I think because of the the length of the series and the complexity of the plots and the multiple point of view characters mm-hmm. like you find in game of thrones or like you find in, in in lord of the rings or the dark elf trilogy or the shannara series or any of the stuff that sanderson or pratchett or any of those guys, you know the, you know i think that it would it's probably better to be a series whether that's a series of movies or whether that's a series uh that you find on your home tv you know or you're, you're downloading on it that's yeah. to be determined i just think that you know it, 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 would, it would probably be get it it would be better for the series if it was done over uh, chunks and maybe maybe it's not like maybe one se- one season is one book you know or you know that kind of stuff and then you get three or four seasons out of it and i think that would be the way that i would probably take it but i'm not in the business you know and if someone came by and said no no, no we can make this work 
then I'm all ears, you know, but I haven't gotten that yet. So I'll let you know when I get that call. <laughs> <laughs> you will get that call one day. My friend. You will get that call one day. Well, hey, if you know anybody, I'm available. You know how to send them to me, right? Yeah, you're uh, going to find your speed for it. <laughs> I, I, I know some independent filmmakers. Maybe uh, y'all can talk. Yeah. Hey, man, I'm, I am down whenever they are. I'd be more than happy to do it. I've got a guy. This is so much fun. I'm going through a process right now where I'm having... Uh, my book trailer is done for my second, third, and fourth book. And if you don't know what a book trailer is, it's basically a movie trailer that promotes your book and you launch it on your social media channels. You can use it in you know closed loop advertising like uh, movie theaters, or you can use it for a variety of, uh, of, of of uses that you want to to show people. And it gives them a sense of what what's going, what they can see, and what's going to be in the book. Mm -hmm. And the guy that's doing it is a true you know, tried and true cinematographer, like a Hollywood guy. Wow. And he, he, he fell in love with it. And I am, you know, I'm, I can't wait to see it. Like I'm nervous about how good this is going to be and how I think his video may actually outperform my writing in some, in some respects, but it's, <laughs> it's been so much fun watching him do it. And he's been slowly, but surely doing this, uh, this, his own release of it, where he's been showing, um you know the creation of the models that he's using or him filming at night with fog or you know the different special effects he even had one this past weekend where he asked his mom to come over and help him do it and she's standing there looking around like what the hell is going on in your backyard you know <laughs> and it's you know and the guy's doing he's doing this stuff in a way that it's within budget and it will kick butt uh and i'm hoping it's like if there was an award for best book trailers I, I would have loved this to submit this for it because I think it's it's going to be that and and that'll be about as close as I get to a movie and it's just you know but I'm I'm looking forward to seeing it and uh, you know I'd, I'd encourage your your listeners to you know to either go to my websites or his and and check out some of the videos when it's done it'll be pretty badass. Oh yeah, I need to put those links up in the description so people can click on it and go yeah, straight no, to no it. No worries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll um, and I'll send them to you when 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 we release them some, yeah, sometime in early please August. Please do. Please yeah. do. Please yeah. do. But I don't know if you've noticed, uh, and I've seen the trailers. I've watched some of the early reviews of this, the the new uh, Tolkien stuff, Lord of the Rings stuff, and they've. I'm sorry to say, this is like they bastardized the whole thing, and I'm I'm very disappointed. And they've put a lot of money into this. What would you think if somebody? wanted to use your stuff and they just totally changed your your vision i mean would you just say no this isn't for me um you know it would depend right like sometimes my vision isn't always the best vision and what i mean by that is i'm a reader before mm -hmm. i'm a watcher and i have a tendency to read books before they make it to the silver screen mm -hmm. and in my head i already have like who the what the characters look like and if someone is miscast in that, sometimes it's jarring for you as a, you know, as a moviegoer. And mm -hmm. you're like, well, I didn't expect that person to play you know, like Tom Cruise playing the stat for me. I still am like, you know, and I'm sure he did a good job. Like I watched it. And I was like, yeah, he did a good job. But that was Tom Cruise. Like it just didn't fit for me because my vision of the stat was something different. And so even though as an artist, I would probably mind as a businessman. You know, it's hard to turn away from something like that that will make your make your book mainstream you know and even if it isn't exactly what you what you envisioned it might be good enough and then you know you you, you have to kind of concede on those points because i don't work in their medium as much as i think it's really cool and i love it they know their medium better than i do and you know i have a tendency to think big you know and when i think big I, that's why i write epic fantasy is that you know it's hard for me to, to distill some of this stuff down into short stories which you need to do if you're doing a movie, it was, I can't imagine it would be really hard to fit all of the details that are in my 500 page Last Keeper or 470 page Vorden's Lair into a single movie. You know, you're going to be a lot of that's coming out. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of that words that I'm using are now translated into body language and you're feeling something from a character or they're acting something out. And it's 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 impacting the way you you you're you're their their emotions, they're they're emoting things that you're reacting to in a movie theater mm -hmm. and so for me i would be open-minded to listening to folks that have a, a you know a better understanding of how that medium works but you know of course you know i would love to protect the product that i've put together i mean i, I think what i've 
put together now and what people will see released wouldn't make one heck of a movie or one heck of a series but that's not for me to decide at this point <laughs> yeah see, it's gonna happen man i hope and so brother i hope so don't you, forget you us little people free tickets I, <laughs> <laughs> you're, I already got you down man you're one of the first ones that helped me out i'm not gonna forget that well you know i i, I look forward to it um i i, I think you're gonna do well and uh I, I appreciate you coming on my show and you know giving me your time and i'll do what i can to help promote it but i think it sells itself well i i first of all thank you for that and second of all it's uh, the, the feeling is mutual it's it's an honor for me to come on a show like yours and uh, have a chance to reach out to the folks that 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 you know listen to you that watch you that know what what you're about i know this isn't necessarily what you cover regularly and so i appreciate the the special dispensation <laughs> that i've been granted <laughs> to come on here and i think that's in part because we're kind of kindred spirits but i also think it's i'm hoping it's because you like the books uh you know and and the storyline so if if you know if i can say that i mean this is a mutual admiration society so i i appreciate it i really thanks. i really do thanks yeah. well you know our show is about promoting people and it's about inspiring people and you know you you've went and you chased your dream you're making it happen there's somebody out there that has a vision in their head right now and they haven't put it down what can you say to them to encourage them to get out there and chase that dream well i would say a few things i mean first of all don't wait you know i waited and i regret it uh you know i i chose a professional path that made me have the resources that i have now that allow me to do what i do as you know, nearly full time, right? I still have my day job. I still have my businesses, um, but I regret wasting 20 years when I could have been writing every one of those days. And I know it might not have been as fruitful, but it would have been more rewarding, you know? And I think that if you're going to learn a lesson from me, I think the honest truth is, you know, as much as I enjoyed my day job for the, you know, the, the first, you know, two decades of my professional career at the end of the day, just doing this for the last couple of years uh there's there's just no comparison it's what i've loved it's what i've you know been uh you know wanting to do since i was little and i finally let myself do it and i don't regret it and i think people will find the same thing and even if it doesn't work out for them they'll at least know like in my case i've already settled on the fact that hey you know what i might do this and get it out of my system and just be happy that i did it you know what i mean <laughs> just say hey look i gave it a run and maybe commercially it wasn't as successful, but for me, I felt like I've given these characters life, the storyline life, and someone uh, will appreciate it. And and maybe one day, you know, beyond my lifetime, it'll be as successful as it is for like a Tolkien or something like that. But those are the wildest of dreams, right? But for them, you're never gonna you're you're never gonna rest until you try to do this. And some people do it in their retirement. Other people do it as a you know, they just got laid off or they lost their job or COVID hit. And they, like me, I didn't have anything to do for a year. <laughs> you know, like Washington, D.C. shut down. <laughs> there was nothing. And all of a sudden, my life became a bunch of Zoom meetings, you know. Right. And, you know, my wife's looking at me and she's like, hey, 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 what are you doing? You know, you're sitting around doing this. <laughs> go do something, you know. And so that was my cue and the opportunity to to go and do what I did and live my dream. And and I owe my wife for, for doing that. I mean, she didn't do it because of my dream <laughs> she did it because she didn't want me sitting around a house getting fatter than i already am eating burritos and watching tv you know but she's like no 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 you're gonna figure out something and i was like well i've got this she's like i don't care what it is just go and do it and that was her level of support and i tease about it but in all honesty she i know that she you know wanted me to do this and i've been talking about it forever and, and the time came and she was like how about now you know this is the time if there's ever no going to be one pieces. Yeah, and so I use it. And so I would encourage those that are listening to this right now, if they haven't done it, try to try to do it. And I would also suggest that if you haven't, if you if if you're looking to write or any kind of project in in my realm, writing, try to make it muscle memory. And what I mean by that is, I feel guilty. My body feels guilty when I miss going to the gym. Like I know that, like today, for example, my day job had me busy, and I'm not going to be able to make it to the gym today. Mm -hmm. I'm already guilty about that. Same thing has to happen for this project. You don't have to write at three or four chapters in a single night every night. Uh, even though some people can and some people do, you're going to burn out eventually. Yeah. But if you're doing something that's related to that, doing your building your social media accounts or you know uh, you're working on that website that you plan on having or 
or you know meeting with beta readers so they can bounce ideas off of them or some other creatives or you're outlining a future project with that you at least feel that you that muscle memory that's there that tells you that hey you didn't do anything for your art today well you didn't do anything for your creative expression today you need to do that and when you feel that yeah, it's missing you feel guilty about it yeah. so you run at it and that, and that's I, I have felt in 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 I just use that as an example but I, I feel if I'm not working on my craft at least an hour maybe two a day and I realize that people have other responsibilities they've got day jobs they've got kids they've got you know relatives that might be sick or parents are taking care of and, and that you know real life gets in the way I, I mean I totally get it but even if it's just a couple of minutes for yourself I think that helps advance it and you know it, it takes that from being a goal to a reality and and that's how I got there I just used I my silver lining for the COVID downtime was a series of books <laughs> Well, if I can add to that, if you have a dream, I mean, go for it right away. Don't don't put it off. As I said, he, he said it perfectly. Life gets in the way. That's why I dropped out of college is I was focused on family and, and work and all that stuff, especially if you're young you got your whole life ahead of you, go, go chase that dream. And if you don't make it, at least you said you tried. And for me, I didn't pursue my dream, but opportunity came up, a new dream popped up. Maybe if you haven't, you're you know, past, past that part. Um, look for opportunities. Uh, you know, my, my, uh, my illness Signed, lied me. I had to retire early and I could have just faded away in my easy chair. Instead, I found something positive and it's starting to pay off. So, well, please. something tells me you're not the fading away in the easy chair type. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Nope. Um, maybe it's just me. Maybe that's the vibe I'm getting here. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I don't, I don't see you just sitting on the porch drinking lemonade and yelling at the dog. I mean, that, that, that's <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> I got to do something or I go nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. Good new, for you. I think that's well said. New dreams, new visions. Hey, let's go for it, you know. But, uh, Joe, man, thank you so much. And uh, when that new book comes out, please come back and, and talk about it. I, I, I want to promote will that, do, too. Sir. Yeah, I will definitely. I'll let you know when it's coming. And maybe we can reconnect on a third one of these, you know, towards the holidays when the uh, – the third one's going to be released and i'll get you a copy for your, for for you to enjoy i hope you like it sweet <laughs> now uh website sure it's really simple it's it's my name it's www.jvhilliard.com uh, my social media stuff is just as simple if you're looking for me on twitter uh, if you're looking for me on insta or if you're looking for me on TikTok, you could find me at jv hilliard books or if you're doing the Facebook thing, JV Hilliard is where you'll find me. Um, and I'm hoping to launch a Discord channel and a YouTube thing coming up here in, uh, you know, sometime in 2023. So we're going to continue to build that uh, that marketing network for myself. But thank you for letting me share that with your oh. with your audience. You know, I, I started a Patreon, but I just really haven't figured it out yet and what to do. So uh, I don't know if you considered that. I did, you know, the, the, I've been advised by people that are more knowledgeable than I am that I should stick to two, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter which they are, you, you know, you might have eight, but, you know, take the six, take the two that are the pillars mm -hmm. and the other six just point back to the two uh, and build a base that way. They think that that's a, a better way to do it. You know, I, I, I think that, you know, right now, you know, I, I have almost 10,000 followers on Twitter, which I, you wow. know, again is, you know, I'm just humbled that people would follow me anywhere uh you know and so maybe twitter might be that that way but i think that you know discord and things like patreon reach out to folks that read my stuff and so it's it's an interesting play i think that's another thing that a lot of folks just um you know are, are looking for snack size things that they can find on youtube digest it when they're on the bus going to work or in the subway or uh they're listening in the car when they're driving back and forth picking up the kids you know, this is something that's, it's, it's a new way to reach people. And that's why, you know, I have an audio book, you know, as part of this too, whether I, you know, I'm, I'm one of those guys, I do a lot of traveling. So I do my reading by listening. Sometimes you're in a plane or you're driving and you, you, there's things in the way you can't read, 
but you can do this and you can do this at night when the kids are asleep. You can do this when you, the kids are, you know, at a ball game or whatever it is. And it's a way for you to kind of stay plugged into things that entertain you as well. So I, I, I try to make, you know, uh, my products available uh, across all those platforms. Well, let's say, man, best of luck to you. And uh, don't, like I say, don't forget us little guys. No, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. And I'm certain I'll be back at the end of the year when we talk about book number three. Sweet. And we might even pick up again on Star Wars or something. Hey, I'm I'm literally doing a show. It's Star Trek versus Star Wars. And oh. I yeah, and I get to go in and, and kind of be like a, a guy that, you know, and I got interviewed for. It. I mean, the, the host of the show uh, wanted to know if I knew enough to be on one of these panels to to fight back and talk about the issues. It couldn't have been just like this, you know, tertiary level knowledge. It had to be deep, deep, deep knowledge. And so I'm doing one of those in August and I can't wait. It has nothing to do with my book <laughs> at all, but I'm going to geek out on it, man. I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. So oh, yeah, and if you like want to talk Star Wars, I'm the guy, you know, give me a call or classic rock, hard rock, heavy metal. I know that that falls into you. I know. Yeah, I saw <laughs> the tats, man. I saw this one here. So I know, I know it's up. So yeah, you know, I'm I'm available for those kind of conversations. Too. <laughs> um, well, thank you, sir. I was going to ask you too before we go. Yeah. Uh, got any shows that you're going to be appearing at anytime soon? So we've got a bunch of conventions. Most of them are in the Pennsylvania and Pittsburgh area. So I try to drive 250 miles within here. So if you're in like the Philly, DC uh area you're in buffalo you're in cleveland you're in columbus you're in west virginia you're in parts of virginia those are the places where you're going to be able to see me in person mm -hmm. and you can go to my website and there's a there's a, a list of uh places where i'm going or if you um you know have a show and you're looking for you know a, a guest to come on i'm available to i have a, a speakers bureau thing that can click on and you know ask me to, to be part of it or leave me an email message or direct message me on any of the socials so yeah i've got a bunch of those things coming up and uh, i don't think that train's stopping anytime soon <laughs> <laughs> that's good that's good man good problem to have right yeah no i'll take it yeah that's right it's a very good problem to have. now you need to get out here to austin though i'll do that i have a business partner that's in uh the houston area and i know i know houston's not austin and i know texas is a really big state so that's i get that three and a half hour drive yeah so but i will uh, i'd be more than happy to to when i'm down there I'll, I'll I'll make a trek i promise well you know my family all still lives around houston so i can always go back down there oh well, yeah maybe i can't come up and you got to come and see me and make, you make the drive <laughs> <laughs> i hear you brother well thanks again and i want to also thank everybody out there if you are new to the channel thanks for stopping by and i hope you'll come back and please hit that subscribe button. For those of you who are regular, I really appreciate your support. And until the next one, everyone, please take care. Be kind to one another. God bless and peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts and on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network.